Senator from West Virginia. Thank you, Madam President, and thank you, Senator Manchin, for uh, such a gracious tribute to our good friend, uh, Woody Williams and his family, to his generation, and to his love of our country and our love of freedom. And, and thank you for the leadership uh, that you showed to make sure that tomorrow could happen. Uh, I know we worked on this together, uh, but uh, it was, this is not an easy lift to lie in honor, as you know, in the United States Capitol. But to me, it's so symbolic of a generation. And I, I've encouraged everybody that I've seen to please come and pay their respects to Woody or to that greatest generation that Woody symbolizes in his passing. I also want to uh, thank the family. I can't see them from where I sit over here. I'm right underneath you guys. Uh, Woody had two daughters, Travi and Tracy, and five grandsons, and three great-grandchildren, one of which is a daughter, great-granddaughter. Uh, and I've had the pleasure of spending time with them uh, over the last several days. So I rise today to honor and celebrate the legacy of an American hero and proud son of West Virginia. And he was always a proud son of West Virginia. On June 29th, Herschel Woody Williams, the last remaining Medal of Honor recipient from World War II, passed away at the grand age of 98. And tomorrow, rightfully, he will become just the seventh American and the first West Virginian to lie in honor in the United States Capitol Rotunda. It's a well-deserved recognition for a man from humble beginnings. Woody was the youngest of 11 children, and I'm, I'm going to tell my, one of my favorite encounters that I had with Woody uh, was he traveled everywhere. I mean, we would get on planes, and Woody, Woody would be on the plane coming to D.C., and you ask him, where is he going? Or, oh, he's going to San Francisco, or he's going to Seattle, or, you know, to do something for Gold Star families, or flip the coin in the Super Bowl. I mean, he had more energy than, than all of us put together. But he told me a lot of stories about his early life when I sat on the plane with him. And he did tell me that during uh, World, War II, uh, World War II, when he uh, was very anxious to sign up, as so many of them were at those, at those young ages of 18, 19, and 20, he had a problem because he didn't really have a birth certificate. He was born in Quiet Dell, West Virginia, which is a little spot in the road on a farm. But he told me that his mother had a really good friend, and his mother's really good friend would come over and help her deliver her 11 children, and then Woody's mother would go over and help her friend deliver her seven or eight children, or however many she had. So he had no official documentation. I think he told me in the end, I'll have to make sure I'm telling this right to uh, Tracy, he told me in the end that um, they had to drag his mother's friend down to the... Uh, to the bureau in the county to make sure when he wanted to sign up to join to make sure that he was actually as old as he said he was. Um, so his, you know, being the youngest of 11, he made a lot of sacrifices for his family. But his acts of heroism would eventually help the United States capture the pivotal island of Iwo Jima, a world away from that dairy farm in Quiet Dell, West Virginia. Many Americans recognize the iconic image of our soldiers raising the American flag atop Matt, uh, excuse me, Mount Siribachi. It evokes an enormously well, uh, overwhelming sense of pride for all of us, of patriotism, of triumph. And on that same day that iconic photo was taken, February 23rd, 1945, a young Marine corporal by the name of Herschel Woody Williams was on that same island risking his life for our freedoms. That day, under constant fire, and he mentioned every time I heard him tell the story, he mentioned the folks that, were, that, that had his back, and some of them didn't make it. Woody, who was a member of the 21st Marines, 3rd Marine Division, alone stormed multiple enemy pillboxes with limited cover, neutralizing one after another, saving countless American lives behind him. He went on to, to fight throughout the entire five-week campaign on Iwo Jima until our forces finally took the Japanese stronghold, marking a key turning point for the Allied cause. His actions that day and throughout the, or, or, or throughout the war are the reason why when West Virginians think of the greatest generation, we think of Woody Williams. But what would set Woody apart, I think, more than those acts of valor on the battlefield, it was what he did after that, how he carried himself in the more than 75 years since the Second World War. 
Through the Herschel Woody Williams Foundation, he advocated for Gold Star families. I was able to attend a couple openings of the memorials with him, and it was uh, quite moving, and worked to ensure that the memories of loved ones lost would go on forever. To date, Woody and his foundation have installed 104 Gold Star family memorial monuments across this country, with about 70 additional monuments underway in every state. Through public appearance and his seemingly unending energy and passion, Woody shared his story with the world. I mean, he was quite the speaker. I mean, I think Senator Manchin would agree with me. He could, that guy could give a speech. And uh, it was always very captivating whenever Woody was on the program. His mission was to inspire those, especially younger Americans, to answer that same call to service that he did as a teenage boy. As he said years later, the people need to remember, if we ever lose our freedom, we'll never be able to regain it. He believed that to every core of his body. There's no doubt in my mind that because of Woody, there are more people who answered the call and chose to serve the United States in some way, shape, or form. What an incredible legacy to leave. He also never forgot his fellow veterans, serving as a veterans service rep for 33 years at the VA. And I'm proud that that legacy of care lives on forever uh, in the Herschel Woody Williams VA Medical Center in Cabell County, outside of Huntington, West Virginia. As a matter of fact, uh, Senator Manchin told me that that was one of Woody's requests is he needs another exit for that hospital. Could Joe, could Joe, could you arrange that? But Woody did all this with the same trademark humility we came to know and love about him. For instance, several years uh, after President Truman awarded him the Medal of Honor, Woody said he remembers asking himself in that moment, why was I selected to receive our nation's highest award when Marines right beside me didn't make it home? And that just tells you everything you need to know. That shows you the kind of man that Woody Williams was, always putting his country and his comrades first, and never concerned with who got the credit. I count it among one of my life's blessings to have had that airline flight of close contact with him, but also through the years seeing him, that I was able to learn from him, laugh with him. He told me, I asked him, I said, why the Marines? Why not the Army? Well, he said he was walking down the street. This is before he, he joined, and he saw a guy walking down the street, and man, did he look great in that uniform. And he goes, that's what I want to be. I want to be a Marine. But one of his family members told me at the funeral uh, over in, uh, in West Virginia several days ago that you need to add on there that he thought it would attract more women at the same time. So he was thinking ahead. He was thinking ahead. And I have to agree with him, that Marine uniform is something quite special, and so are the Marines. The last thing I'll say on a personal note is the many times that I saw Woody being born in 1923 was a reflection of not just him. He, in his eyes and in, in the way he carried himself, I saw that whole greatest generation from my dad, who was also born in 1923, who served in World War II, who left this country for a cause greater, for them, greater than themselves, who believed in protecting our freedoms, who went and fought for people they had never met, known, or seen. And when you think about it in the context of where we are today, you think how special that was for our nation, for that greatest generation, so when I say goodbye to Woody tomorrow, when we have the ceremony tomorrow, we're saying goodbye and thank you to that greatest generation that my dad was a part of. And it, it, so it has a lot of, I think, nostalgia and remembrance in all of our hearts and admiration for their um, passion and love of our country. So tomorrow as we honor a great man and tell his story, Woody will still be doing what he's always done, and that is inspire us. So here's to a well-lived life and a country well-served, even long after he wore the Marine uniform he loved so dearly. Hoorah, Woody. Rest peacefully, and thank you. Madam President. Senator from Madam West Virginia. President, I, I know that both of us want to thank uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, 
uh, and Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and uh, Ranking Member uh, of the uh, Republican Party, uh, Mitch McConnell, and, uh, and, and all the people were so instrumental in making this happen. There's only been 35 people lying in state uh, in this capital. 35 out of millions and millions and millions. And it's a, tre a tremendous tribute for us uh, coming from our wonderful, patriotic, beautiful state of West Virginia to have the greatest generation being represented. And as Woody would say, it's not him, it's for everybody. And I hope all the families and everyone who had anybody that served. Uh, Shelley's dad was wounded in, in, in World War II, Purple Heart and became our governor and uh, three times and a tremendous friend of mine. And my father and all my family served in World War II. Uh, but to have so many people, but Woody is doing that for them. Tomorrow is for every person who has sacrificed and given their all and the families who've sacrificed also. So we want to thank them for making that happen. It was a great tribute and a great honor, I know, for the family and all of us. God bless you all, and thank you for coming. The senator from Rhode Island. Uh,